So I've got one last uh, proof we're going to do here uh, in this series on uh, proofs related to sets. And we've actually kind of seen this already. Right, what we saw earlier was that A union the intersection of B and C is equal to the union of A and B intersection the union of A and C. We saw this with just two sets. Right, so this is the same as the, the statement I've got down here, but with N equal to 2. So what we're doing here is we're, we're doing what's called generalizing. We're taking something that only applied to a fixed number of sets. And we're going to show that it is actually true for an arbitrary number of sets. And the method we're going to use here is exactly what we've been doing before. We're going to show the set on the left is a subset of the set on the right. And the set on the right is a subset of the set on the left. Therefore, they must be equal. All right, so first... Uh, let, let's do, first we're going to show A union the intersection is a subset of the intersection of the unions. All right, so let's see, let's start, let X be an element of A union intersection B sub I. Then, either, we've got two cases here, x is an element of A, or x is an element of that intersection. All right, well, if x is an element of A, then uh, x is an element of the union of A, with every one of those index sets. Well, if X is in every one of these sets, then X must be in the intersection of all of those sets. And that's the definition of the intersection. And that's what I was trying to show. I was trying to show this right here, and we've got it. Now let's do the other side. If X is an element of the intersection of all of those index sets, then X must be an element of each individual one. And if X is an element of each individual one, then it's an element of each one union A. Well, if it's in each of these unions, then it must be in the intersection of all of them. I'll turn it around, put the A out in front. And that's what we needed to show, right? Therefore, A union, the intersection of the B sub I is a subset of the intersection of the union. And again, just to kind of take a step back, right? what, what do we do here? Uh, we started by saying X, assuming we, we picked an X out of the left-hand set, and then we said then there were two cases. Either X had to be in the first one, or X had to be in the second one. Then we, we made our argument, right, and showed that X also had to be in that right-hand set. Okay, good. Now... Let's do it the other way. Now I need to show that the intersection of the unions is a subset of A union, the intersection. So we're going to do uh, a very similar approach, right? First, I'm going to say uh, let X be an element of the intersection of the unions right then definition of intersection x must be an element of a union b sub i for all i now again we're going to have two cases so x is an element of a or x is an element of b sub i for all 
i. All right, well, if x is an element of a, then we're home free, right? If x is an element of a, then x is an element of a union any other set, in particular that one. That's what we needed to show. All right, now over here, if x is in every one of these b sub i, then x must be in their intersection. And if x is in that intersection, then x must again be in the union of that intersection and any other set, in particular, the set A. Therefore, we're done, right? We, we've shown all the possibilities here. Therefore, the intersection I equals 1 to N of A union B sub I is a subset of A union the intersection. So since we've shown both, intersect, uh, both subset relationships, therefore the two sets are equal. A union the intersection is equal to the intersection of A and the union, which is what we wanted to show, right? And we're done. Okay. Not not a difficult proof, really. Uh, there were there were a bunch of parts, right? Because there were we had to look at the two different subsets we had to show, and then there were two cases for each subset that we had to look at. Uh, and messing around with those indexes at all, it, it it can easily get a little cluttered. Uh, but there really weren't a whole lot of new ideas going on here. We're using the same method uh, that we've used in the other set equality proofs that we've done. All right, so we're not done with sets, but in the, in the next series of lectures, we're, we're going to take a brief diversion and talk a little bit about functions. Functions aren't necessarily a uniquely discrete math topic, but they are just an unbelievably useful thing. Uh, they show up in uh, practically every branch of math, uh, and we're going to need them as a tool for showing relationships between two sets, specifically for showing when two sets have the same size.